Welcome back to a brand new video. I've came down Paul Linford Racing. If you don't know who Paul is, he is basically the man for anything RS500, whether it's road cars, race cars, parts. Would you say that's fair, mate? Is that what you, is that yeah, what you do, yeah, isn't it? I guess that's all I do, yeah. Restorations Just, as well? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So we're going to have a look around, see what Paul's got in. I've done a few videos like this and they always seem to do well. So there's obviously a lot of interest for it. So shall we start with this one, mate, on the ramp? Can do, mate, yeah. RS500, obviously. Yeah, genuine look. Quite a low mileage car, this. Uh -huh. The owner's had it a lot of years, um, but unfortunately hasn't used it for the last God knows how many. So he rang me up and said, would I go through it and just, you know, see what it wants to get it back on the mm -hmm. road. It wouldn't start. Right. That was the first thing. Um, I thought, right, well, see if we can get it running. Well, the fuel pump was seized up solid. Really? Yeah, so we put a brand new fuel pump in it. Um, that's in, new filter. New hoses, and, uh, new cl clips and that, uh -huh. you know, rather than uh -huh. use old ones. Makes sense. Um, so I thought we'll do that. Well, we'll put a clutch in it because it had right. um, a paddle clutch in it. And, it, it, you know, they're all right at paddle clutches, but they're a bit heavy. So we'll just put a new standard Ford clutch back in it. Obviously, new timing belt and tension, you can see is on it. All new alternator power steering belts. There's a power steering leak we've just found, so we're going to have to get the rack reconditioned. The radiator was leaking. So we've got another radiator there for it. This is quite modified as well for today's kind of RS500. They tend to be standard, don't they? They do, Whereas this yeah. one's got like the, it's got a carbon splitter on there. I know it's, it's got five stud hubs as That's opposed right. to the four. Because it's got the BBS wheels on it. And I said, where's mine? Yeah, they're proper BBS. Ah, they are nice. And they liked them, but you could only get the five stud. It's got the spec brakes on it. You mm -hmm. can see there where it's just sat behind. It's got a carbon fibre bonnet on it. Oh, right, yeah. So, so basically, once we've got it up and running, We'll see where we are money-wise, what he's spent on it, mm -hmm. and then he'll determine what else we do. He, he would like standard brakes putting back on it. Right. Um, Is this big power? Like no, four, no, five hundred or no, something? No, no, it's only um, stand, uh, stage Two, one. Right. Two fifty, two sixty. Yeah. Which is a nice car, no, lovely nice. looking thing. I see nice. when I came down, it's quite clean underneath, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, because like, it is, no. like I say, it's low mileage. Mm -hmm. like there's yeah, no rust or anything. No, it's mint generally. underneath. Yeah, it's a nice car. Uh -huh. So. Uh, the turbo, you know, we had to rebuild that, which is a brand new one in here, if you want to have a look oh, at I'll it. Have a look. That's just come back from uh, Turbo Performance. Vincent, Mark have done that for us. So there's the turbo just come back nice. there from being rebuilt. Um, unfortunately, what had happened to it is the, the, the blades at the front, something had got into the turbo and had marked all the veins. Like a little stone or something? Yeah. And luckily, we had it done because the, um, the pin... You can see there, there's a new bush and that in it. The pin and that was very badly worn, so they've had to put a new pin in it, um, rebuilt it. They put a 360 bearing in it, a standard now. Mm -hmm. So it's a slight upgrade to a standard turbo. So that's done, <clears throat> as I say, with the radiator pumps, and it, yeah. it's soon turning into a fair bit of money. So it uh, escalates, doesn't it? Nice. Yeah, but, but you know, and then, like I say, once we've done all that, determine where we go to next. Of them parts, man. So we've got another black. Is this RS500 as well, Paul? Yeah, genuine 500. This is just coming to be sold for a customer. Right. Believe it or not, 125,000 miles from you. Oh, I've seen the video. You've done this on your YouTube channel. Yeah. 125,000 miles. Every single MOT certificate from brand new. Looks and well mine for the mileage. I'll tell you what, Adam, honestly, I was blown away when it came because he said to me, you know, it's 125,000, but it's only had two owners, mm -hmm. one previous owner. And the, the first owner only had it for eight months from new. Right, so... And then, and then the second owner's had it all the way through. So it's been looked after, and not it? Did he put the majority of the miles on it? All of them. Did he? Because it was like, like eight months old when he got it. So it's just, it was his daily... Yeah, he's used for it all years, the time. then. Yeah. But, but then, like I say, it's every single MOT certificate, you'll find mm -hmm. another like that. I know. And he started up, Adam... And the engine is absolutely silent. Sweet. It nice. really is a hell of a car. But people, you know, on the video, oh, shame about the mileage. Aye. But to be honest, Wouldn't put I would have think probably a high percentage of Cozzies that claim to be 30, 40, 50, 60,000. I mean, look at this, for instance. It's got full service history, but only early in its life. Mm -hmm. And it's got the original book and it's all stamped. Now... And it's got every MOT from you. So what you could do, if you wanted to be devious, is throw all them MOT certificates away. Uh-huh. 
wind it forward to about 40,000 miles, mm -hmm. it's got full service history up to 40,000 miles, every MOT up to 40,000 miles. Uh -huh. You could, you could. Which, to be quite honest, I think a, a majority of them probably have been uh -huh. done like that. Uh, there's, a lot is, of, there's not many Cozzies were spotless history now, is there? They've all got exactly. a bit of something in them. Some and... missing or a couple of MOTs missing. Or... No, I think it's, it's nice a car. fabulous car for somebody who wants to use one. I mean, paint on it's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Obviously, it's been painted. Yeah, it's had a full paint mm. job, but it's been done, as you can see, proper. Done well. I so love it. Oh, it is. It's a nice car. Is it getting a windscreen? I just noticed it's got a little yeah, crack Yeah, obviously, there. as soon as we find a buyer for it, I'll put a new windscreen new in screen. it it's got a crack in it. You can still get the screens, can't you? Yeah, you can get them, yeah. So what's this, Paul? Uh, th standard three-door? Standard three-door, believe it or not, was brought to me over a year ago. Right. Um, but with one thing and another and me being so busy, he just said, look, he was a bit a lovely guy. He lives mm -hmm. in France. Just do what you want. What do you mean? <laughs> well, he says it hasn't been on road for a few years, so just... Go through it, do everything you think it wants, refurbish the wheels, do any paint work you think that I want, just to get it. He, he wants to use it, so he uh -huh. doesn't want it restoring. He just wants it tidying up and, and pretty much like that one, belts, oils, everything, just to make it reliable. Are you putting a dash in it there? The what, sorry? Are you putting a dashboard in it? No, no, it had um, um, a load of bulbs out. Oh, all right. So, so I took the clocks the out to change all the bulbs, get the bulbs working. and This one's been in the garage for a while, Paul, as well, hasn't it? I know, it's part of history, part of the fixtures and fittings. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's nearly done. Is it? I had a stint on it a f about a month, six, six, eight weeks ago. All the wiring looms in now, all the gauges are in. I've got to put the thermostat on the water pump on, pipe it up, and it's about there. Or oh, get the exhaust made, I need an exhaust section made for it. And it's done. Are you making the exhaust yourself or are you getting someone to do it? No, I want to get a local fabricator lad to, to oh. make them up for me because he's going to do, I want to take the one off my Bastos car and get him to copy that one because I love that exhaust. Mm -hmm. Side exit? Yeah, so I'll get him to copy that exactly and he'll make some jigs up and then he's going to make me like two or three so I'll have them in stock. Oh, all right. And then when I want one, I can just ring him and he's got a jig and he can just make me a few more. Uh -huh. So you don't see many like this now, Paul, with a bit of... Well, not, I'm not going to say a tatty paint, but a couple of marks on it. A bit needs a bit of work doing. The reason is, that is fair? it's had an underbonnet fire. Has it? Yeah. Luckily, not bad at all. Was it around the, the tape? Will go around here, don't they? Around the fuel pressure regulator Norm, area. Normally, the fuel pressure regulator. We're not really 100 percent why this has fired, but as you can see, it's minor. Mm -hmm. It's caught a bit of the wiring. <clears throat> we think. The fuel light fuels leak down where the joints are down there. Right. We think. Till we strip it, we don't really know. So but it's melted all the rock cover and that a yeah, bit as well, hasn't the it? Even the airbox as well. But compared to that white three door, I feel this is very, mm -hmm. very I, I reckon to be quite honest, you could probably get this running quite easy. And a bit of wiring. A bit of Change wiring. Some pipes. But obviously it wants a lot of work. All end up getting repainted, new bonnet, new bonnet event, um, all the covers, the wiring. The, you know, there's still a fair bit of work in it, but so did he catch the fire in time yeah. and put out himself? Yeah, no, he was actually at a detailer's. Right. He'd been detailed and it was parked outside the detailer's running. Running. And then poof, just burst just into flames. Up. And luckily they had fire extinguishers when they ran and put it out. So he was very lucky that they had them. See, I've got, fi I've got, have you seen the fire sticks? Yeah. I've been better, I've got them in my cars now. Just yeah, you told me about them. I mean, I'm, I have a little bit of paranoia. It's got to mad, isn't it? Fires, I mean, if you look on this workshop, there's three fire extinguishers over there, there's four over there, there's three in that container there, there's one there, uh -huh. there's three over there, you've got there a, and, and there's no, 12 in there, what, three in each corner. You've got, you've got to have you? Obsessed with it, you know, and I'm terrible on a night, I turn every single plug socket off. I do that in my garage. Every single one, what are you doing that for? Mop fires is either electrical or fuel. Uh -huh. What else causes a mm -hmm. fire, really? I know. And a lot of things, I mean, not a mock the Chinese, but a lot of stuff now is made in China. And it's not the highest quality and you're plugging it in. Exactly. And you don't know when it's going to short out or anything, do you? Exactly. So, so, yeah, this is, uh, to be, this is one to start. Sooner rather than later, you're just obviously dealing with insurance company mm -hmm. on this because he's claiming off his insurance. So the insurance should be out for this. Oh, yeah, they'll pay out on this, no problem. Right. Uh, shame. Yeah, but like well, I say, it's been caught early. Been caught, there's nothing, fixable. There's nothing drastically wrong with it. 
It looks worse because it's dusty and that as well. There's a lot of them catching fire as well at the minute, isn't there? For some well, reason, it always seems, it's always fuel related. It never seems to be electrical. I think it's just modern fuel, isn't it? Do you think that's what it is, breaking down the fuel lines? All, all fuel lines and that. And I, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm quite surprised if insurance companies don't start charging a premium for classic cars mm -hmm. now. Because it ain't just these, there's a lot of classic cars are just bursting into flames. And it's the fuel lines, like we say, breaking, breaking down. down with modern fuels. You've just had this all built, Paul. Looks yeah. amazing, mate. Absolutely Ab love it. Absolutely made up with it. Yeah, Aye. really, really pleased. Something I've always dreamt of from being young is having a workshop like this. Because this was the original workshop, uh, workshop for quite a few years, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I knew I'd say it, but you do, don't you? I kept thinking, how did I manage in there? Mm -hmm. Bear in mind when you think this third of the garage had four of my cars in it. Uh -huh. Stacked along here. So I only had two thirds of that workshop to actually work on. You look and you think, well, how, did, how did you do it? It wasn't easy. So the, the best thing is now, the idea is this is going to be what I call my mucky workshop. Right. Where we do the fabrication on the, on the shells, fit the roll cages. Taking engines out, etc. Yeah, or, or, or servicing and that. We'll use these two ramps for servicing um, or, you know, minor small recommissioning work. will all be done in here. I am actually thinking a section in this corner off here and bringing in everything, you know, from my fabrication room. Mm -hmm. Dodgy tools. All the guillotine and... and my lathe and everything, and having it, you know, like in a quarter area, so that, you know, if I'm fabricating a shell here, I'm just walking there to fold a bit, and mm -hmm. rather than inside. Walking and backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah. And then this is going to be... Tell you what, mate, you filled this up quick as well, oh, mind. It's bloody ridiculous. <laughs> the idea with this is, this is going to be, um, when a car gets to that stage, like Andy's car, Let's come back from the paint shop. This is where we're going to build them up. Right. So I've just ordered, which will be coming early part of next year. I've got a four poster ramp coming here, a Ben Pack four poster ramp. And that's really for um, suspension setup. So I can put all the corner weighing equipment and the scales and everything on this four poster ramp. Because as it is with the two poster, if you have to adjust it, you send it up and all the suspension drops. Troops. So you've then got to put it back on the, the, the corner weighing scales and roll it backwards and forwards mm -hmm. to try and get it to settle. And you can't ever really get it to settle exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But with a four poster, you leave it on the scale, send the ramp up, you can do the adjusting while it's on the scales and, and you can physically see where it wants, you know, mm -hmm. adjusting as mm -hmm. you do it. So a four poster there. Then I'm putting another two poster here that I've ordered, that's coming early January from Snap-on, a, a big two-poster here for, like, that car would go on the two-poster two when we want to put the engine and gearbox in, put it on a trolley underneath, send the car down, bolt it all up, so that's the plan. So this car is a German DTM car, Paul? Yeah, an original DTM car. This oh. isn't yours, is it? None of these cars here, these four are all customers' cars, all for sale. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a, a DTM car, a uh, striking livery, I, really, you know, it's I, one of the... I have just done a video on this car, so if you want to see it, I will leave it in the description of this video, where you can get, find out a bit more information on this. I think What's what else cool is, car? When, when they make a model of a car, people remember uh -huh. it, and in that car, obviously, there's quite a few models you can buy already in that livery. That's got to be one of the most remembered British touring car uh -huh. liveries of all time, but they've never made a model of it, which is unbelievable, Buffalo. really. Yeah, but that... It's, well, I don't need to say anything, no, do amazing. I? That car this is. is. This is Tim Harvey's yeah. BDCC car, which everyone will have seen on telly and YouTube the, over the years. This is, this is a car that before I bought a touring car, and I always desperately wanted one, this is one car I tried to buy. Mm -hmm. And I remember Martin Johnson, who actually owns that car now. Martin Johnson owned this car at the time. It's quite a few years ago now, probably. Oh, a lot more, maybe 15 years ago, maybe. He had it up for sale for 50 grand. This? This car was and 50 grand at one couldn't point? Couldn't sell it. For 50 grand? Yep. Couldn't sell it. And I scrimped and scrimped and scrimped and scrimped. What, Desperate, trying to buy it? Desperately wanted to buy this car. And I rang him up, and he must have had it for sale, Martin, 18 months, two years. What year was this? I can't remember. It's a lot of years ago. Before they were collectible, you uh -huh. know, a lot uh -huh. of years ago. And um, I remember ringing him and saying, Martin, I can raise 
I think it was 46 or 48 grand. That's all I could raise. I want to buy the car. And he said, no, no it's got to be 50 grand or whatever the price was. It was a circle around that price. And I was just short of the money. And I thought, he'll come back to me. Do you know what I mean? He's had it for sale for two years or whatever. Anyway, I remember getting a bit more money together. I rang him up, all excited. He sold it the day before. Really? All that time it was for sale and it went to Australia. This is for sale now, isn't it? How much is it advertised for at the minute? How 300. Much is 300. The prices have just gone mantle on these. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's a very, very original car. It's never, ever had a full nut and bolt restoration. It's obviously had bits of paint over it years, uh -huh. but it's, it's never been restored properly. But you couldn't restore this, though, could you now? No, no, no. It'd be criminal to restore no. it. No. I would absolutely love to own this car. I would. I really, really would love to own it. So would Tim Harvey. I bet, I bet. Tim rang me as soon as the car came in for sale. How much is it, Paul? I told him, he went, ooh. <laughs> he said, a lot of money. He would love to own it, I know he would. Aye, so would I. But the, the good thing with this car is it's, it's race ready. If somebody wanted to race this car, they could race it with Tim Harvey. Right. You know, go be... do two driver races with Tim. Ah, that would be, a, yeah, that'll that'll be cool, be wouldn't it? I would love that car. If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would... Buy that car. Buy that car. Absolutely, hundred percent. I've also done a full video on this car as well. I'll leave that in the description if you want to find out more about this car. I see it run. We sit in it and just talk a bit more about it. But like you say, mate, it's an amazing piece yeah. of history. Yeah, exactly. Piece exactly. of history. Here's another car we've done a video on. Yeah, we did a video on this a long, long time ago, didn't we? Now, um, this has been restored since I restored this car over last winter mm -hmm. into beginning of this year. Um, stripped it, rebuilt it, and um, Paul Smith, who owns this car, actually raced this car this year with his hero, a man, Steve Soper. So I had the pleasure of working with Steve and Paul with this car, which is phenomenal, you know, yeah. to look after a car that your hero is driving. Mm -hmm. And um, the funny thing with this car is we couldn't get to test it anywhere. Bearing in mind it had been stripped to a bare shell, completely rebuilt, engine rebuilt by Harvey Gibbs, down in Peterborough, SCS, he did the engine for us, new turbo, everything. And we just couldn't, because of the noise of these kick out, they're like 130 decibels. Mm -hmm. Most tracks won't let you on, you see. We couldn't get a test it anyway, so we, we didn't think Steve Soper would drive it, to be honest. We thought he's going to say, no way. Because it hadn't been tested. Never, no, not even done a shakedown. Well, mm -hmm. as people know, when you build a race car, you go out and do a few laps, you bring it back, and you go around, you check every single nut, bolt, washer, clip, screw, everything. People's lives are at stake when mm -hmm. they're racing these. And then you'd go out and do another 10 laps, you'd bring it back, you'd check it all again. That's called a shakedown. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even do that. So I said to Paul, who owns the car, I said, look, we, we haven't done a shakedown of anything with this car. He says, oh, I don't think Steve will want to drive that then. So he rang him anyway. And, Steve said, which was brilliant for me, Who, who's rebuilt it? He said, oh, Paul Linfoot's done it. He says, oh, well, I'll drive it then. Really? Yeah, which, when Paul rang me back and told me that, he says, you know, that's... Testament to yeah. your... Yeah. So we, we took it to Donington, and I said to Steve, you know, we haven't done anything with this car at all, so just go out, Steve, do two laps, and bring it back in. Because all he had to do was qualify. Uh -huh. So all you have to do is go out, potter around for two laps, come back in, you've qualified. And we're stood on pit wall, me and Paul, who wants car. Sofa comes past. Boom! Fucking hell. He's shifting. But anyway, comes back next time, absolutely screaming. Jesus, we said go steady. He did about eight laps. Did he really? Yeah, and um, me and Paul are looking at each other thinking... <laughs> man's a lunatic you know we're looking at his times we're like have you seen how fast he's lapping he was the fastest Sierra out there really the fastest Sierra out of them all was Stephen this qualified he qualified third on the grid mm -hmm. the only two cars that were in front of him were the Nissan Skyline GTRs which obviously he'll mm -hmm. never catch a, a GTR but he was the fastest Sierra and he came in and he took his helmet off and I said I thought you were going steady Steve he just laughed he said look he said a professional racing driver knows when a car's all right. He said, I did half a lap. He said, it was stopping all right. It was turning all right. He said, there was no rattling, no squeaking, clunking. All the gauges were fine. He said, so I thought, well, I'll do half a lap at race pace. He said, I did that lap. He said, 
it was still all right. I just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, amazing. So that amazing. was good for me as well, because soap is my hero. Mm -hmm. You know, I have uh, the British drivers, soap was my hero. The Aussie drivers was Dick Johnson. You know, so to, it's just a, a real honour and a pleasure to, uh -huh. to look and after think, the car. I think that highly of your, your workmanship as well. Yeah, I was chuffed to bits. Uh -huh. and, you know, they did, we did an hour race, which an hour for one of these is a long race. Mm -hmm. Any turbocharged car, anybody will tell you, they don't like doing long races. And um, we did the hour race, and Paul, who owned it, said to me, as long as we finish the race, he says, I'll be absolutely made up. And we finished. Mint. Mint. So we were chuffed to bits. So another two and quarter, Paul? Yeah, this is um, a Japanese tour, as that one is. This was raced in Japan. This was originally a, um, a Japanese car as well. Built brand new for Eddie Lee. You, you maybe won't recognise the name, but if I tell you what company he owned, Lee Jeans. Oh, all right. Lady Lee, his, this was his car brand new. Eddie had two cars. He had this car and a car built by Andy Rouse. And they raced both the cars, but they crashed the Rouse car badly. So all the, the better spec parts of the Rouse car were then fitted to this. So this car is basically a Rouse spec car now. Got a proper car, nice car was campaigned. Uh, funny enough, Paul Smith used to own this car. So when, when you look at these cars here, Paul Smith owns this car now. Paul used to own that car. He bought that car, he brought it back from Australia mm -hmm. and raced it with Tim Harvey. Paul owns this car now and Paul used to own this car as well. <laughs> so as you can see, he's a bit of a fan of the 500s. But yeah, this I mean, is a good car. This is for sale, well, they're all for sale. Uh -huh. This is for sale for 190,000. That's 225, 300, 155. Amazing. Cool, put the bonnet on one, Paul. Yeah. Show people what's... They're all different, uh -huh. you know, they're all slightly different variants, but... Slightly different cages and stuff, aren't exactly, they? Exactly, different layouts and that, but they've obviously all got the same engine, the same turbo, the T4, the same H injector in the manifold, so they're all pretty much similar. See some Orland shocks there as well, that's not something yeah. you normally see well, on Well, these a... actually, being fair, aren't really legal. Are they not? No, because the cars in period were not adjustable suspension. So in period, if you went to a different track or you wanted to make it firmer or softer, you had to dismantle the suspension, put different poundage springs in or different poundage inserts into the shockers mm -hmm. and then assemble it back up and put it back right. together. You know, nowadays you just turn a knob. Turn a knob. How much did you say this one was? 190, this one. See, if I sell me house, I might be well, able to... Remember, you can always live in your car, right, but you can't right. race your house. That's it. If, if I had the money, I would love all of them. You know, I, like, I love them all. I think everyone would see that, though. Does this twin, ex twin exhaust? It's like an exhaust on each side? Yeah, what they've done with this, because of the noise restrictions, remember I said about that car, we couldn't go testing. Mm -hmm. When Jim Whelan owned this car, he had a side exit, but one pipe coming out each side with centre boxes in it. Mm -hmm. So when you start this up, it's really quiet. Because there's two... two it's pipes. like half the sound, yeah, in, yeah. in a way. So it's really, really quiet, is this car, which is good. To be honest, I, I'm, I'm sort of maybe thinking of going down that route myself with cars I build, because more and more tracks now are, are getting really strict mm -hmm. on noise. Mm -hmm. And like we did with that car, we just couldn't find anywhere to go testing. So it's maybe, the, maybe worth me checking that exhaust off and copying it, really. Mm -hmm. Over here, Paul, we've got a... I'll just shut that down. Right. A very iconic and famous and just amazing car, really. This was a Texaco car, hence yeah. why it's black inside and... Under the bonnet, it's... Now, all these under here, luckily, are my cars. Uh -huh. They're all customers. This is, yeah, like you say, this car means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. Um, one, my hero was Steve Soper. Mm -hmm. Well, this was Steve Soper's Texaco car in 1988. And then Rudy Eggenberger, who built these cars for Ford, chose this car and built a brand new car to go to the Spa 24-hour in 1989 to attempt to win that race, which... So I've been told no turbocharged car had won that race up to that day, and this car won it. And this car won it, so this, this could be the first turbocharged turbo car, car to win the Spa 24 Because they said turbo cars can't run for that long. Mm -hmm. And it's proved mean, otherwise. Yeah. I mean, Rudy did win the Nürburgring 24-hour. 
the year before, in 87. Right. With it, with a, a 500, but nobody had ever won the Spa. And this car won it. I mean, I would love to put this back in the Texaco, Texaco livery because it's iconic. But you saw uh, uh, as much as I desperately want to, you can't really because it's the Spa 24 mm -hmm. hour winning car. Amazing. Well, I love this Amazing. car. Right. I do. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Didn't see their black inside off when it was Texaco. Well, you did a video on this, didn't we you? Did. With me at um, Say, uh, Silverstone. Yeah, having a bit of fun in it. Uh -huh. I don't race this car. I, I wouldn't want to. I couldn't afford to write it off. or So I don't race it. Just I just enjoy getting out on it. Yeah, I enjoy driving it, but uh -huh. I'd never race it. I'm not a good enough racer to, to justify this car. Uh -huh. So no, this is one I am going to race. Um, I bought this car. This car actually is going to go on one of the new ramps when they're fitted to strip it. I need to get on with this car because me and Carl Jones, who drove this car in British Touring Cars, are going to drive this car. We're going to race it together, share the drive and race it. Quite an interesting car, this as well, isn't it, Paul? This kind of, it was a, like a low-spec car. Yeah, it was built on a really, really small budget, was this car. It and it ran on a low-spec budget, wasn't it? Exactly. It, it had all... Rally car suspension, like, well, we did a video on this car, didn't uh -huh. we, all about it. Um, it's back on all proper Group A suspension now, so it'll be a better car now. But I so bought this car. what were your plans car. with it, were you saying? You know what, sorry? What were your plans with it, were you saying? Are you going to strip it? I need to strip it and rebuild it, refresh Fully it. Fully strip it and... Yeah, and I'm not going to do much with bodywork at the right. moment. I'm going to tidy it up, put the original livery back on, because obviously the Duckham has long gone off. It's still got the original bonnet on but all the duckums down the side has been taken off, so I'm going to have to put it back, but only tidy it up, because obviously we want to race it, so there's no point in making it look like brand new again. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully me and Carl can do a couple of seasons in it, have a bit of fun with it, and then when we've done that, then I will strip it to a bare shell and absolutely make it pristine like a mint. and keep it. But you're not going back to the rally suspension, are you going to keep it? <laughs> Like it, centre lock wheels and that? It's a difficult one because this car ran in period on the four stud wheels. Mm -hmm. It's on the better suspension now, the proper touring car stuff, so it'll make it a better car now. But when I restore it, it's that dilemma of do I make it a lower spec car but back to exactly how it was in period or do I leave it on its centre lock wheels? It's, I don't know. That'll be one that I decide on the day, I think. You'd swap it about, couldn't you, really? Not really. It's no? Not, you know, it's quite, it's not easy to swap it, it not? about. Right. No. So I'll decide that when, when, when I restore it. It'll probably go back to original. Four stud wheels, yeah. rally suspension. Put the original RS200 wheels uh -huh. back on it, exactly. I think I would, personally. Because I won't race it then, you see, uh -huh. so it, do, it doesn't really matter. Right. I wouldn't be bothered about racing, I would just be happy to have it and even just do some... Like you do with, with a exactly. bastard's car, just get out in it. And for, for, for demo purposes, it won't matter yeah. that it's on the rally car. I mean, don't get me wrong, Carl had some brilliant results with it with the rally car suspension on it. Not mm -hmm. like it's going to be ridiculously slow. No. And it's just never going to be a major competitive car with the rally car suspension mm -hmm. on it. But and you've got an excuse when you don't win. Good point. I think <laughs> I'll put the rally car on and then when, I, when I'm last, I can say, oh, it's because it's suspension. <laughs> This is very iconic, Paul, very iconic car. Yeah, we um, did a, a video on this years ago now, didn't we? And mm -hmm. It's been a popular video. The Dick Johnson's first ever Sierra DGR1. This is immaculate as well, mind, isn't it? It is perfect. It's, it's, an, old, it's an old race car, so it's not perfect, but it's, it's very, very, very tidy. Yeah, it's, you know, when you look around it closely, I mean, none of dog gaps and that line up perfectly. And that It's had more hits than Elvis Presley <laughs> as his car in its life, but... Again, like we said earlier, it doesn't matter on a race car. <clears throat> People don't go, oh, Christ, it's had new wings on it because it was bent. You know, if, if a race car hasn't been crashed, it's not been trying hard enough, <laughs> has it? It's not like a road car, is it, where it matters? It doesn't make any difference to them at all, no, but that oh. is... I'm very, very, very lucky that um, that car means a lot to me for a lot of reasons, but, you know, Dick Johnson's one of my heroes in Australia as a driver. I know Dick personally which is amazing and he's a fabulous bloke. So down to earth and chilled out. He's a, a really, and, really yeah. great guy to know. And then obviously I own the Bastos car, which again, my, and my hero in England, Steve Soper drove it. So, and Carl Jones is a very, very good, we've become really, really good friends. So I own 
a great car from a great friend and two of my he heroes cars. cars. And I know Steve Soper well because we run that car with him. Mm -hmm. I know Dick Johnson personally. I know Gianfranco Brancatelli personally who, who drove that car over the finish line at, at, at Spa. So, you know, there's, a, there's more than just a, a connection to the car. Ah, oh, you go you know, connect to the people. the people. Which makes a massive, massive difference, really, to be fair. You oh, know, yeah. I even, you know, when, when I, I, I recently changed the livery on this car because it was in the later 88 livery, which was wrong for this car. Right. So oh, I've seen that on your Facebook where you were getting the livery done. That's right. Well, it's back now in the livery that it should be in for 87. And, you know, it's nice that I could send pictures. I sent pictures to Dick Johnson's wife, Julianne, via Facebook and said, look, I've had it put back in the livery. And she replies and says, Dick said it looks fantastic. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Amazing, mate. Amazing. So these will be with me, I think, forever, these cars, uh -huh. I'm pretty sure. So this one's something you... When I first done a video with you, this was all in Prime, wasn't it? It was, This is a yeah. good friend of yours, Andy's? Andy Kirkley, he's had this forever. He's had it 20-odd years as Andy. Raced it for a lot of years. He's um, a bit like me, he's Andy. He's more into the fun of it. He's a good racer, he's a good driver, don't get me wrong, but he, he does it for the fun of it. Uh -huh. um, Andy raced it for many, many years, and unfortunately, over the years, it was sat outside. And, oh, was it? Yeah. And when it wasn't worth a great deal. Exactly. I think, I'm sure Andy won't mind me saying, but he's had his 20, I think he paid 15 or 20 grand for it. Really? But that's all it was worth at the time, I you know. know. And anyway, Andy raced it a few years ago and, and got friends of his to drive it for him. And we started to notice it was sort of... Needing to tidy up. Yeah, it was rusting and starting to crack everywhere and that, because it was old. So... What, the metal was starting to crack? Yeah, just because it was old. Mm -hmm. So we stripped it completely, as you see, to a bare shell. New cage in it, had a new rear quarter on this side, new wings, new doors. And you're doing all this yourself, aren't you? You do all the, like, the yeah. building and stripping. Yeah. And... Well, uh, next year, beginning next year, which is obviously only a week, a few days away, this is my priority now. Is it? This car, I need to get this done for Andy, mm -hmm. get this done so he can use it get that on a ramp and get the Duckham's car stripped so that's a car for me and Carl to drive but that's my priority one thing and another this has taken far too long mm -hmm. but there's obviously been Covid we couldn't get any bits we couldn't get anything for it mm -hmm. I had a particularly bad year this year with, with my partner's health and one thing and another so I'm gonna fire on with this car and get it done for him I know he's keen to get it back I bet he is I bet he is quite rightly so so here we've got a road car, Paul, uh, RS500 Moonstone Blue. Yeah, this is for sale for a, uh, a very, very good friend of mine. Very sadly due to very ill health with, with Gary. He's had to sell all his collection of cars and parts. Well, he had 10 RS500s. He had 10 RS500s? He had 10, and this is the last, of, the last of the 10 to sell. Um, this is the one he liked the most. He's had it the longest. This is the first one he's ever bought. And this has only done 26,000 miles. Really? It's all it's done for you. So this is the last one of his to sell. Rare colour as well, one of the rare colours. Yeah, only 52 made. All original under there, never been restored under that bonnet. Very nice. It's nice, isn't it? Very nice. I'd like to keep this myself if, again, you know, if I'd have had the money mm -hmm. just because, because it's a beautiful car and because it was my mate's car, mm -hmm. I'd like to have kept it, but unfortunately it's for sale. £125,000. Good investment for someone. Exactly, they're only going up, aren't they? They are, aren't they? It's a lovely, a lovely example. It is, it's a very It's got nice a cracked car. dash, but never bothered Gary because he used it, you see. Not Obviously fact. sparingly because he hadn't done that. Because I think Gary's had it over 20 years. Has he? Mm. He only used it for shows and... So I'd crack anyway. In I'm fact, not. if I remember correctly, in the service history, there, look. Every time he went to an event, a show, oh, right. you know, all, all entrance passes and that to all shows he attended with it. Amen. Not many people keep that kind no, of stuff. I think that? it's just, I don't know, it's just something really nice oh, about it. Isn't it? Car, just isn't to it? sort of show up, there's all history and all MOTs and everything with the car. A nice example. It certainly is. So, this is a car I've heard you mention quite a bit, Paul, but I've never seen. It's always been, until you had this unit built. 
I well, I've had it this in storage, wasn't it? I must have had it coming on 20 years. This, have you? And I've only ever done 10 mile in it. Really? All I've ever done in it is 10 mile. It's never ever been restored. Original paint. It's mint. Oh, it's 2000. And the, the story behind this car is it's when I was 17, all I ever wanted was a black Iris 2000. Uh -huh. Couldn't afford one. You, you couldn't insure an Iris 2000 when I was 17. What year were you 17? What kind of year were you talking? <sighs> well, 80s? Oh, yeah, 80s. I, I mean, I'm 51 now. So it's 40, 30 odd years ago, isn't it? 30. Long time. Yeah, long time. Can I have it inside? Of course you can, yeah. It's a bit dark in here, though. It is, isn't it? I like that. What they like to drive? I've never drove like an old Mark Terrible. Are they really? They really <laughs> yeah. Like? I mean, don't get me wrong, the handle fantastic. You can throw mm -hmm. them round roundabouts and slide them about. You know, but they're a bit noisy and a bit. You know, or just old. Exactly. They're just an old car, but it's all I ever wanted when I was it when I was a young lad. I could never afford one. And it's the first car I ever treated myself to. If you know what I mean. Ah. The car that I wanted and and honestly, Adam, I trip up and down the country looking at RS2 that it had to be black I really wanted black interior because for some reason most of the black cars had brown interior right just a bit of a contrast mm -hmm. but I think it looked terrible and honestly I got sick of seeing heaps of junk and I'd say to people when I'd come I'm a panel beater I know what I'm looking for I don't want one that's had sills and arches I want an original car which people say, no, oh, fun. they're so rare, but obviously 20 odd years ago, they weren't that rare, mm -hmm. you could easily find them, but everybody lied to me. And I really? was sick and tired of pulling up and looking down the side at car, the door bottom sitting out, and I just, oh, I just drove away. And I remember, I was at York, my mate owned a garage at York, high performance garage, big into cozies. And um, I'd called in for some reason, I was on my way home, and I thought, oh, I'll call in and see Neil. And he says, uh, where have you been? I says, oh, so-and-so, so-and-so. He says, have you got an RS2000 here? I said, no. I said, I'm almost giving up. He said, I'm surprised you haven't bought one from Round Corner. Which one from Round And in York, um, the, there was a main depot for budget car rentals. Right. And the guy that owned budget car rentals lived in York. And he didn't run the rental part of his business. He had managers running it. And he had a little showroom selling high performance like Ferraris and things like that you know high-end cars he's got one in there Boom, off I went <laughs> pulled in and the showroom all fancy cars in front this was right in far right hand corner covered in dust been there for, really? for ages and I remember walking up to it and just looking like that down side and it was arrow straight and I just thought I just knew that's the car anyway Long story short, I bought it on the condition that he didn't wash it, right. didn't do nothing. He said, well, we'll get it MOT'd and I know I want to buy it exactly as it is, sat there. And I paid 11 grand for it, which is today. 20 years ago. Was this uh, 20 years ago when you bought it? Yeah, just under right. 20, 19, 20 years ago. 11 grand for an RS2000 then was mental. Yeah. Right. You know, like today, they're all 40, 50, 60, 70 grand, are mm -hmm. they? But then, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> little best. But then, obviously, 11,000 was mental money for an RS2000. But I knew what I'd got. Uh -huh. Never been restored, never been touched. And I thought, you know what, even though it was a lot of money for me then, I just had to have it. Mm -hmm. I knew I'd never find another. So I brought it home. Uh, well, I actually called in, you know, one of these, remember them jet washes where you used to put a quid in? Oh, the petrol stations. Uh -huh. And it was middle of summer. And I remember putting, pulling up at this garage and, and I must have put about 30 quid in this <laughs> thing. And there was a massive queue of cars behind me, do you know what I mean? All looking at me. And every time you go, beep, 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 when you're about to run out and I'd be like this. And you could see woman sat behind me going, because <laughs> I'm putting more money in, and I just jet wash it and jet wash it and jet wash it because I didn't want to sponge it, you know, uh -huh. it being black. And I brought it home and I was absolutely 
uh, you know, just made up. absolutely made up with car. And so you've I mean, still done no paperwork to it at the minute? Nope, and it's just... I've never done anything to it. And the reason, what makes it a bit special is I rang the RS2000 registrar for RS Honours Club because he was looking for one for me as well, he said, I'll mm -hmm. do my search. Don't you dare <laughs> jump on that car, yo. <laughs> She's gonna look. That's a good job, they've got soft paws, isn't it? Um, anyway, I rang him and said, I've, I found one. I've got, one. oh, brilliant, Paul, well done, mate. He said, uh, what have you got? So I told him, and he says, um, what's reg number? So I give him reg number, he went. He said, that's ringing a bell, that reg number. He said, was it on another plate before? I said, yeah, it was, and it's on all windows. There, look, C-A-R 10-T. Can you see it? Uh-huh, C-A-R Well, it reads, car lot. Oh, right, uh-huh, uh-huh. He said, I know that car. He said it was bought by a car dealer in West Sussex because he wanted the number plate off it, because it reads car really? lot. So he took the number plate off it and he sold it on. He said, do you know what car that is? Black RS2000. No, he said, it's a bit special, that car. He says, why? He said, well, Ford, back in the day, built 10 RS2000s. And they put every single Group 1 Extra that you could buy at the time on them 10 cars, but they did it at the factory. Because apparently back in the day, I'm wishing I'm too young to remember, but you'd go into a Ford dealer and you could buy an RS2000 Custom or a non-Custom. And obviously the Custom was a higher spec car. It had full length door panels, a centre console, you know, things that, uh, you know. Creature comforts. Yeah. Um, this was a Custom. And what they had, they used to have a chart on wall and a lot of people have got them in the garages and they'd have a picture of the carburetors. Right. And it was like 199 quid. And you could pay the extra and you could have twin 44 IDFs fitted for 195 quid. Or you could have um, a quick rack steering rack for 80 quid, whatever the prices were. And these were called the Group 1 Extras, right? And there was a lot of them. Well, Ford built 10 cars with every single one of them extras on them at the factory. And they gave it to the top 10 dealers of that time and said, you can... That's pushing this look like yeah, that, isn't she it? She is pushing the look, isn't she? Um, she's, you, you can sell the car, but you must have it in your showroom for six months or whatever, so people can come in and actually see a car with all the Group 1 extras on, so they can physically see it. Uh -huh. And this was the black car. Wow. And obviously, I didn't know that when I bought it. And anyway, he gave me a list, he said, have you got a pen? So I wrote it all down, and he said, right, this is what it should have on it. So it's got the full Group 1 engine. Who put the bonnet? Yeah, it's um, wax oil from you. Is it? And I've never taken it off. The wax oil? Yeah. So does it look pretty not terrible? Terrible, but is it, it kept it neat. It looks terrible, doesn't it? It doesn't know, does it? But look there where I washed it off. What, the wax oil? It's like brand new. Is, you can see it? every single spot weld on alt wings and that. You can see every date stamping wings look. And I've been so tempted to take the engine out, wash all this wax oil off, polish it all up and paint everything, but it's original. Mm -hmm. And it's on the original, like we all see it's on the original, original once. Ones. And I like it the way it is, so I'm happy with it. So it's got the twin 44 IDFs, downdrafts, mm -hmm. full group one engine. It's got a quick rack, steering rack, an anti-dive kit, vented discs on the front, Bilstein suspension all round, uh, an Atlas axle instead of an English axle with an LSD in it, so it's limited slip diff. Rocket gearbox. What's a rocket gearbox? Just like a closer ratio right. gearbox. So it's got all these extras on it that were fitted at factory. Amazing. And the only reason I don't use it, if I'm honest, is because if somebody ran into it... That's one of my biggest fears with I'd, my car. I'd flip. Aye. I would absolutely flip my lid because... It's just the dream car I've always wanted. And to be honest, as I get older, I am now starting to think I should use it. Because mm -hmm. I've had it 20 years. I don't MOT it every year. I should have done maybe, but I couldn't care whether it adds value or not because I'll never, ever sell this car. I've been offered a massive amount of money for this car. An absolute huge amount for it. Probably, I wouldn't far off bet, probably more than any other RS 2000s ever sold for. Mm -hmm. But I will not sell it. So, and I just think, yes, it maybe has been a shame the last 18 years because it's been sat in a shipping container 
and I brought it out every summer, every spring. I'd wash it off, polish it, drive it to the bottom of the driveway, turn it on turn to make on. sure brakes don't seize up and keep engine going. And it was only this year when I got it out the exhaust started blowing because the exhaust is rotted mm -hmm. we're being stood so i'm going to put a full new exhaust on it i'm off to get this and the mustang detailed early this year by sam you know who did the white three door uh -huh. she's going to come with her, her i don't know whether she's married husband or boyfriend they're going to detail both these for me you know bring it up bring it look nice but now it's in here people can see, can it. see it so I'm, you know but i, I keep Wait, thinking man. i should put it on road really one of my fears is someone going into the back of one of my cars, and my cars aren't as special as this. But I still, I love my cars. I thought no, someone going in the back. Our cars it's... are always special to us, mm -hmm. aren't they? This is very special to me. And the problem is, what what I fear is that I'll lose the love for the car. You know, like it might only want a back panel, but then it's not an original, unpainted, unrestored, no. untouched car anymore. And will it switch me off wanting it? Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's mean. got nothing to do mean. with the money of this car because I will never sell it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether it's worth 10 quid or 10 million quid, it's irrelevant. I just don't want to fall out of love with the car. Mm -hmm. And I think I would if, if it had ever. Like it's not perfect, you can see there, look at them, where it's got some scratches on wings. And all I've oh, done right. is touched it's it in because I don't want to paint it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's obviously leant over it, haven't they? You scratched it, isn't I? But to be honest, I'm going to touch that in again because Sam has said that if I touch that in again I'm, and I, I lightly nib it when they detail it, you lose it. You lose 90% of that. But I don't want to paint it, you see. Where would you find another Mark II that's never had paint? Is there any others? Well, there's maybe a couple. I'm but sure there will be, but. Not many. Like I say, oh, I keep looking at that and thinking, oh, I should take that off and get it painted. and. I would. Like you see, it's original. I, don't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Maybe it's just a happy WD-40. Why some WD-40 on it? I am going to definitely do something with it later this oh, yeah. year. Yeah, 100%. I'm going to put a timing belt on it, service engine. Ah. Like ah, you say, I might just give it a clean and try and make it look a little bit more presentable. But underneath is like, same as this, it's been zybarted from brand new. So underneath... What's it called? Zybart. Zybart? Yeah, if you look there, can you see where them plugs are? They used to drill holes in the car everywhere. Like if you open the door, all the sill edges have got holes drilled in them. Really? And they used to fill them full of this Zybart, which is like glue. And then they used to put them little black caps over where they'd put holes. God. <laughs> and that's what they did in the uh, 70s. And that's what, Zybart. What was good. But to be honest, I've never seen anything better. Because when I bought this car, the only Zybart I did clear, clean off was the sills. And I bought that far up the door bottoms all was I barted and I couldn't live with that, it looked terrible. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I could get to, take, to touch it was petrol. What, to it off? Nothing would touch it. So I used to, I had a tub with petrol and a brush and I'd be rubbing it with paintbrush and petrol ate it off. And I remember getting it all off and I polished the sills with wax polish and the door bottoms and there isn't a single stone chip on any of the sills. The absolutely, you can see every single spot weld all the way along. All wheel arches at back, you can see all spot welds. You can all see, right. you know, there's um, that date stamp in the wing there that you can see at that side better than this side. You can see it there, there's a date stamp. Uh -huh. You can see the date stamp on the wheel really? arches at the back and I've never seen that on another Mark II. Do you know what it is? I don't know if it's just me, maybe you're the same, but I love seeing under a car, nice spot welds. I don't know That's what it is, you know. about this, because even though the, the, what, that Zybart's quite thick, like there on the wings, you can still see every single spot weld. So you go underneath the car, and everywhere you can see spot welds right. everywhere, and you think, how many RS2000 Mark IIs can you do with that? And I'd love to strip it all back off and polish all the floor and that, but then I think, do you know what? It's 40-odd year old, and it's still, like, brand new. Mm -hmm. So why take it off? I know it's never going to get damper out in here, but no. I ain't bothered. I'm not, no. I don't care if somebody looks at that car and goes, well, it looks crap. No, I won't, I won't be bothered. So is that when it was last on the road as well, 2006? Is that tax disc? It will be, yeah. Ah, 2006. Yeah, because I've, I've, I had, like I said, I did 10 mile in it, and I'll tell you when that was. I went to Lightwater Valley Ford RS Owners Club Day. Uh -huh. And I took this car. On trailer, uh -huh. and 
I said, oh, fuck it, I'll go for a drive in it. So I pulled out of Lightwater Valley. We went around this like wood park thing. It conked out, didn't it? Did it? I couldn't believe it. Went to start it. I'll bring our last. No phone signal. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up, me and my mate Rob ended up walking about four miles till we got a signal. Run out of petrol, hadn't it? Uh, so he had to come with some petrol and a jump pack. Got it going. Cool. I took, I drove it back. That was the last time I'd ever last drove it. Last time you drove it? A, a distance. You know, I've started it, driven it up and down the right. driveway, but the last time I'd ever drove it. So, from quite an old car to quite a modern car, this thing's an absolute animal, mate. You had me out in this and scared yeah, the daylight out of me. Yeah, absolutely. What's this about? 850 brake? 800. 800? Yeah, 800. You love this, don't you? I absolutely love this car. It's just a hooligan as well, isn't it? It's just... The size of that shot. I don't know if it's going to come across on the camera, but the size of the engine is just ginormous. I just absolutely love that car. It just ticks every box. It mm -hmm. sounds incredible. It goes well. It handles superb. With being a genuine Shelby, it's got all the Shelby upgrades on it. It's comfortable just, as well, isn't it? Size yeah, it's so just, well put together. Different, to totally different to what I was expecting um, from an American car. Americans won't tolerate poor quality like the Europeans will. But it used to be, didn't they? Years ago, Americans were known for building poor cars. Yeah. Whereas now, this beautiful inside, all put nicely stitched, leather everywhere. Yeah, every, yeah it is mint. Ah, it's like it's, BMW quality or Mercedes quality, isn't it? As, as I said on the video we did on this car, I'd never even driven one. Uh huh. And I went out and bought a genuine Shelby and the very, very first Shelby S550 built anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So this again is a special car. Like this is, I like, I like cars that have got a backstory with mm -hmm. them. A standard car's nice, but collectors like to, like I do. I'll talk to anybody. I've talked to Cat for three days about my cars <laughs> if she'll listen. And if you've got a story about them, it makes them interesting. The story with this car, the very first one built, is, is was it is the known. first one built outside first Shelby built outside it was, the UK? This is the very first Shelby GT uh, Shelby Mustang built anywhere in the world. Right. It was built in the UK by Bill Shepherd Mustangs, and Bill Shepherd's son, I've got it in an email, said there was a bit of a bit of a kick off about this car. Mm -hmm. Bill built this car while Shelby in America were building a Shelby as well, the first S550, this shape. He was told not to register that car till their car had been registered. He registered this first. Did he? So this was the very first one ever built and the first commercially viable to be sold S550 Shelby anywhere in the world. That engine is absolutely huge as well, mate. Massive, aren't they? Aye. I love this car, so I'm looking to buy another one at the moment. I would like either a GT350 or a GT500. Right. I'd like one of them. Mm -hmm. But I won't sell this. No. I'll keep this. But this is quite nice with having carbon fibre bonnet on it. I was going to say a full carbon bonnet. All splitters are carbon. All side skirts, rear spoilers are carbon. Mirrors. And of course, like, like now tie. Unbelievable. Sounds it scared amazing you, well. didn't it? Did it not? The grill as well, I remember the grill. So well made that grill, isn't yeah, it's it? Billy Just... Alley, is that? Aye. Once polishing, Mike. Aye, but mint. This isn't a 500, is it? No, this is a standard three door cosy that I <laughs> bought off a guy and had it a few so years. So this is yours? This is mine. I've, I've actually taken a deposit on this car. I've. I bought it, I think, just because I felt I had to own a three-door Cosy, really, mm -hmm. because of what I do. And I bought it as a non-runner. I've got it running, it runs well, done a few jobs to it, but it just wants a bit of finishing off work doing. But I advertised it and I sold it as it is, as I say, I've had a deposit on it. So I'm going to sell this, and the money from this is going to go towards a 350 or a GT500, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm drawn to these massively. So this and is... A not a 500, but it's got all the genuine 500 kit on. That's right, it's a standard three-door cosy, but it's got, it's got a fiberglass splitter on it, as you can see. It looks mm -hmm. like they've been using it for a snowplow. <laughs> but it's a genuine bumper, genuine rear spoilers. Interior is to die for in this car. Mint, is it's it? absolutely mint. The dash is uncracked. Really? Yep. The, the seats are mint. It's a bit too dark. You got your phone there, Paul, to put a light on. 
Yeah, it's dark in here, isn't it? Mm. Oh, they are nice seats. Absolutely. Nice bolsters and that. Yeah. Yeah, the interior is absolutely lovely. I mean, they want to clean, but... A bit dusty. That's not even that bad, is it? No. Oh, nice, mate. Nice. But yeah, I just thought if somebody wants it, I'll sell it. It's a nice car. Nice car to use. Pop yeah, exactly. In. It's ideal for somebody that's got a couple of weekends just to finish it off, you know. Mess about little jobs on it. Yeah. Tinker with it. It starts and runs fine, mm -hmm. so... No, just nice car, mate. MOT and... Few little jobs. Alright, nice. Spot on. Ideal for somebody that ain't got the fifty grand plus to buy one mm -hmm. on the road. That's it fellas, thanks for watching and thanks to Paul for having us down. Paul has started a YouTube channel. I'll leave that in the description. Or if you comment mate, I'll pin pin your comment at the Perfect. top yeah. so people can find you. Paul's going to start to do videos about his cars, he's just his your daily jobs, mate, what you do? Yeah, mainly I started it for cars for sale. Uh -huh. You know, do a walk around video and put them on YouTube. Um, but I'm going to put a few snippets and bits and pieces mm -hmm. on there and see how and it goes. Paul's what you're selling as well, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I'll also leave a link to Paul's Facebook page and I'll leave a link to my Instagram. And if you check out my list of YouTube videos, there's plenty of videos with Paul looking around different cars. But yet again, fellas, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.